We can start today's lecture. So welcome everybody. Uh, on Black Friday, we will have some discounts on more theory. Uh, so let me recall where we stopped last time. We are proving cancellation theorem. So cancellation theorem tells you that if you have a Morse function with two critical points p and p prime, and uh, a gradient like vector field for this function such that there exists a single trajectory gamma coming from p to p prime so and the vector field is supposed to be more smale then you can find a morse function such that this uh, on the same manifold which is changed and the, and the new vector field such that these critical points are deleted so this is a cancellation theorem. Two critical points and a single trajectory between them. So in particular, the indices have to be different by one, differ, have to differ by one. Uh, then you can cancel. And we, are, we were proving it in two stages, essentially. Uh, first stage was uh, to choose a neighborhood in which a uh, in which a change of the vector field could be conducted. So we had our, our gamma. This is a Morse function. So we had up prime and up in here. So these are Morse coordinates. And we used the gam the curve gamma to flow the coordinates in a very concrete way to flow the coordinates or to extend the coordinates from the set up to the neighborhood of the curve gamma until we reach up prime. And then we said, well, that was hand waving and that was left uh, for a curious uh, audience to read 18 pages proof of uh, Milner, which is not that hard, but it's uh, if you want to do it properly, it's long, uh, that if these coordinates don't match, so you have two sets of coordinates on this strand, one coming from this part and the other part, the other set of coordinates coming from this neighborhood. If these coordinates match, then we can find coordinate system such that the vector field Xi is like here. So these are nodes from last time. And we can argue that we can just modify the vector field in such a way that it flows the other way around. So V was this coordinate along the along the along gamma and uh, gamma and we just move, make it flow back. All right, so that was uh, an idea and uh, we stopped at that moment uh, with the new with a question, where did we use the fact that gamma prime that there is no curve gamma prime. So the curve gamma prime was drawn as the last curve here. And what, where is this, the assumption used that gamma is a single, uh, mm, a single trajectory from P to P prime. For the moment being, we didn't use this assumption at all. All right, so this was like, we could have like several curves gamma, several trajectories gamma coming from P to P prime, okay? So now there is a lemma, All right, sorry. Lemma, which is like, I think it's assertion two of Milner's proof, but it might be assertion three or four. If gamma is a single, to, uh, sorry, this single is not a good word, a unique trajectory from P to P prime, then for any neighborhood U of gamma, there exists a smaller neighborhood u prime of oh, of gamma such that 
and let me just this property put in drawing different code. If a trajectory of xi, recall that xi was our vector field, if the trajectory of xi leaves u, u well, leaves u and u prime, then it uh, u prime and u uh, u prime and u sorry, then it does not hit <clears throat> u prime again. All right, let me just stop for a moment for you to. Keep it uh, to understand the meaning and let me draw a picture for this. So we have a point P, P prime. I will copy the picture for the next page in the moment, but let me just draw it. So we have a trajectory gamma, which is red. And for, because I'm lazy, I, I just draw it as a straight line. Then we have a big neighborhood U and we have a smaller neighborhood over here, a smaller neighborhood U prime. And now we have uh, any trajectory, let's say, gamma prime. And this trajectory leaves U prime and then it leaves U. And then it cannot can't enter uh, can't enter okay can't come back so how can we prove it well, this is easy. Well, easy because not because it's easy as it's as itself, but it's uh, easy once you uh, once you've uh, known uh, the argument. And we've used this argument, so this, I, I told you there are some patterns in proving results in Morse theory, and this is one of the patterns that you already know. So if you think about it for a moment, you'll see that the statement fits one of the patterns that we've already met. So proof. Suppose contrary. So towards contradiction. Choose a family UN of neighborhoods of U of uh, gamma such that UN is gamma okay we can write like normally you would say okay we don't want to introduce the metric because it uh, obscures the picture but take the smaller and smaller neighborhoods of of gamma you can think about it as like saying points of distance less than one over n to the curve gamma okay that's the way we think about it assume that there exist trajectory n of xi that leaves u prime at a n leaves u at b n leaves 
enters yo prime again at cn so the notation can be drawn on the picture so this is like a n this is like b n and this is like cn when i'm saying here leaves or enters i'm not very precise because the trajectory can do like like this so which point do i choose i say no, it doesn't matter the, the only thing that matters is that this point is hit first before this point and the trajectory goes through a m first then through b n and then back through c m okay that's the key point and now i have found a sequence of points everything is compact so pass to a con pass to a subsequence uh, well one more uh, about compactness uh, cancellation work without compactness assumption in general uh, here we use compactness not of the ambient space but of the neighborhood u so if the closure of u is compact so actually we use the statement that the trajectory that the space is locally compact so finite finite dimensional uh, we don't need to use uh, compactness in a more Mm, uh, to, to have compactness of this of the space omega but that's has to converge in subsequence so a n converges to a b n converges to b and c n converges to c where is a and b and c well the intersection of u n is gamma so u n come closer and closer to gamma so a and b belong to gamma Excuse me, so this u prime is uh, where supposed to be u n. Yes. yes, because that was, uh, we want to show, to, our aim is to show that some of the u n's is u prime, can be chosen as u prime. Okay? okay? One of the u n's will be our u prime, and suppose we can't find, and we, we assume that towards contradiction, that uh, none of the u n's can serve as u prime okay that's our assumption and then we saw that well if none of the uns has this property that the trajectory uh, leaves and hits and then doesn't come back then we get contradiction so a b belong to gamma and c belong to, belongs to the boundary of u which is quite far away from gamma okay gamma is inside and u is away from u so we are on a trajectory. If I claim that A and B has to be the critical points. Um, do, you, do you mean that um, B is in the boundary of U and A and C? Oh, we... yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, That's a shame. And B is a critical point. So A and C are critical points. Why, why is that so? Well, we have uniqueness theorem. So if A belongs is here, then the trajectory through A must be OK. So now there is uh, one statement that we that I forgot to say. A limit of trajectories is what we already know. A limit of trajectories is a, either a trajectory or a broken trajectory. Okay, so there is either a trajectory from going from A to B, from A uh, through B to C, or a broken trajectory. We assume that there are no other critical points than uh, in in this region than p and p prime so this can't be a broken trajectory if there if there are critical points we can still get away without it okay so but uh, 
and uh, you probably can. Um, so anyway, suppose for a moment that it's a regular trajectory going from A through B to C. So if A and C belong to gamma, they are in here, then the trajectory of psi through, uh, through A is precisely my trajectory. So it can't leave, it doesn't leave, it doesn't hit any point on the boundary of U. So A cannot belong to the interior of the trajectory. It has to be a limit point. And the same for C. Okay, now A and B can A and C can't be the same point because there are no trajectories starting at the critical point and coming back to it. So A and C are different critical points. So this means that A is equal to P, P C is equal to P prime. And now what happens? Where is B? B is on the boundary. So what does it tell us? It tells us that we have just constructed a trajectory that starts at P, leaves U, and hits P prime again. So this is the limit trajectory. OK. And this tells me that I have constructed another trajectory. This trajectory is not this. This trajectory from P to P prime is not the original trajectory because it leaves it leaves out of U. Okay, so this so in this way I have constructed another trajectory. So I told you last time where is the assumption that. But this might also be a uh, this broken trajectory, so it might consist of, of several trajectories between several critical points. Okay, if it if there are other critical points in between P and P prime, okay, okay, then it can be a broken trajectory. The argument that P and P prime are the endpoints of the broken trajectory is this, are the same. So you start at P because you can't start at any point of gamma because you start if you start at any point of gamma, then the first part of the broken trajectory is gamma, and then the other part of the broken trajectory is a trajectory that starts at P prime and ends up at P prime. It, it can't happen. So a trajectory, if it's a broken trajectory, it's still a broken trajectory from P to P prime. And then, OK, we have a broken trajectory from P to P prime. What are the indices of the critical point in between? So we have P of index, let's say we call this index uh, mm, index P is H index P prime is H plus one. So if there is a broken trajectory of Xi going through a critical point, broken trajectory of Psi from P to P prime going through a critical point P double prime, what is index of P double prime? Well, if index of P double prime is less or equal, of course we don't, then we have like F of P less of P, P double prime, less of F of P. If index P, P double prime is less than index of P, uh, plus one, then there are no trajectories from P to P prime, P double prime. Okay, this is the more smell condition. The more smell condition tells you that the dimension of the space of the trajectories is uh, equal to, uh, well, the, that the space is empty unless this condition is satisfied. All right, I think we have it somewhere in the notes from uh, uh, no. 
itself, it's, uh, it's this. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't find it. Sorry. Let me just, let me just come back and continue. The, 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 we will come back to it in a moment. So this is the more smell condition. All right. And if index of P prime, P double prime is of, sorry, of P prime is greater or equal than the index of P double prime plus one, then no trajectories from P double prime to P prime. But now you see this index, this is equal to H, H, this is H plus one, this is H plus one. So having any number for this, any any integer, any integer, whatever you pick, uh, either this is satisfied or this is satisfied because the indices differ by one. So there can't be any broken trajectory from P to P prime, actually. No matter if you assume that there are critical points in between or no critical points in between, there are no trajectories between P and P prime. Uh, there are no broken trajectories from P to P prime. Okay, that's... Oh. Why did we assume that the indices of P and P prime are consecutive? By rearranging well, with... Otherwise, the space, well, we assume that the, 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 the gradient like vector field is more small. And there is a single trajectory which tells you that the indices can be consecutive, one greater than the other. And uh, other than that, we assumed it in the proof. We used it in the proof. So we have like set of coordinates in here and set of coordinates in here, and they differ by a single, by a single sign. So other than that, you can't find proper coordinates because you have your space of trajectories, your stable and unstable manifold are, mm, well, uh, don't match. You can't make them overlap if they have different dimensions. So, and uh, pictorially, the assumption is that you have, mm, sorry, you have this situation. All right, so this is the picture of the uh, saddle node bifurcation, which is at the, mm, the like behind the scene in the theory of uh, mm, mm, in the theory of uh, Morse in the, uh, of cancellations. So, and the index of this guy is two, and the index of this guy is one. So always they differ by one. If they don't differ by one, you can't cancel them. Okay, so th no, this is a fundamental assumption. You can't even think about canceling critical points of indices different than uh, of indices different than one. All right, so here we are. So we come back to the proof, but the proof is that we are already. And let me erase something so that the picture, so I can obscure the picture further. All right, so I, I will also erase the, this part because I don't need it anymore. And in a moment, I will assume that I will assume I will really assume that there is no there are no trajectories. So, uh, because other otherwise the proof is much harder. And you can usually you can assume because if you if you look carefully at this picture at this inequality, you can say well okay if I have any critical point I, if I have any critical point in between. I, either the index is less than h, less than h plus one, and then I, uh, sorry, less than h, 
then I can move this critical point below P uh, by rearrangement, or the index is greater than H plus one, and then I can move it above by the same argument. So this is uh, like, uh, uh, this is like the, um, um, this is the, uh, this is like uh, not a very restrictive assumption that we assume that there are no critical points. So let me come back to the proof. So we take now the neighborhood U, which is, what was the color? The color was orange. So let me draw it in orange. And let me draw it over here. which is inside all right so here is the here is you and now the color of your prime is greenish so let me just try my agility and To see if I can draw it. So I choose U to be a neighborhood of gamma contained in the coordinate neighborhood. And I choose U prime inside uh, inside U and U prime is chosen from the lemma. So this is U prime, this is U. All right, so we have the picture. Uh, and now the statement is modify the vector field psi inside of your prime. So we modify it as in here. I told you we have the vector field is psi smaller than mm, psi with this parameter and this was this function this was the coordinate along the trajectory and we make v negative again so psi till psi prime is the same vector field here but with v but with v negative all right to get a vector field psi prime. Psi prime is equal to psi away from u prime. Psi prime has negative. Mm. Mm. All right, so we modify it. Uh, there is a technical statement that you need to modify it in such a way that psi, uh, that you want the psi to be equal to something like, we have psi minus x1 minus xh, v of xh plus one, xh plus two, mm, xn, and you define psi tilde to be psi plus phi times c times uh, mm, minus c times d over dx and plus one in such a way that phi is a cutoff function and for phi equal one the x and plus one coordinate of psi tilde is negative so you need to make sure that this this vector field eventually leads out of your prime okay so this is like we modify it we modify by, we don't, 
you see, uh, last time I told you the plan is to modify Xi so that this term becomes negative, but we want to have this modification supported in a neighborhood of U prime so that we can control trajectories outside of outside of U prime. So what do we do? We take okay. I say. Uh, 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 I want this. Uh, I, I have to use the cutoff function. And if I use the cutoff function, then there is an argument which I don't want to write down in detail. Uh, if you define, if you use the cutoff function, you need to make sure that you don't create any new critical points. So xi tilde has no critical points inside of your prime. So how do you prove it? Well, you look at coordinates. So if x1 is non zero, then xi tilde has no coordinate. It has, uh, mm, mm, it has, uh, has no critical point because it has non, non, non zero first coordinate. And the same for the second, for the third, for, the for all the coordinates, except for this one. And if you are on the xn plus one coordinate, then why it's uh, why it's never zero? Well, you subtract the if it's uh, you show that if it's uh, zero, then phi has to be then you have to be well mm, over here. And then you are if all the coordinates are zero except for possi possibly for this one, then you are on this or that strip, and on this and that or that strip, the vector field psi was already negative. So if you subtract something negative, you don't create any new critical points. So this is an argument that uh, is much easier to think by yourself than understand when it's written, uh, than understand when somebody else writes it. So I never read Milner's argument in detail in that aspect. I Instead, I just used, uh, used my own reasoning so this type this type of proof is uh, is okay and that that's the first point xi has no critical points and there is another the one xi tilde has to lead out of the neighborhood of xi so what happens so we need to make sure that if with this definition of xi tilde, no trajectory of xi tilde stays forever in your prime. All right. So this is another assertion of assertion of Milner, and we work in, in local coordinates. So this is again a technical issue. So assume that a trajectory stays forever in your prime. Well, then you know these guys have to be zero on this trajectory because if they are non-zero, then they explode. This is like expanding, these are expanding coordinates. So, so they, so they, so they explode. Okay, so they have to be zero from the beginning. If they explode, you, you go out of your prime, you go out of the coordinate neighborhood, they are too large. Okay, so they have to stay small. So these have to stay small. These coordinates, if you stay in your prime forever, then these coordinates are smaller and smaller because of the vector field. So the, these coordinates decrease exponentially. So if you stay forever, you come to the set, you come close to the set where uh, all these coordinates and all these coordinates are zero. But if you are near this set, then the, this coordinate is negative as by, by what I told you. This coordinate is negative on the whole of the set minus x1 up to xn plus x, x, xn. So this is negative and it's bounded from zero away. So C is some constant I forgot to tell you, but I guess you, you, just, uh, you just guessed it. Uh, but if this is bounded, if this coordinate is bounded away from zero, then for some time, for some finite time, after some finite time, is it will be so large that you leave that you are out of your prime. Okay, so let me just write it in uh, two sentences. One, the 
vector field xi tilde is of form v tilde of x h plus 1 d over dx h plus 1 on u prime intersected with x1 equals xh equals h8 plus 2 xn equals 0 with v tilde of x1 smaller than some c1 smaller than 0. So this is like one thing that I don't prove, but you can check it. In particular, Xi tilde has no critical points in inside of U prime. Second, if a trajectory of Xi tilde stays forever, actually, if it stays forever in U, not just in then it uh, uh, sorry sorry I should say it's equal to uh, v tilde x x x, x plus one on u on the whole of u but not not on the not not just on u prime but this is uh, this is no uh, uh, not a big deal that i say that it's uh, that it's on u and not on u prime because on u xi tilde is equal to xi and xi has this property by by our choice of coordinates so no trajectory of u for otherwise Psi tilde would converge to the sorry the trajectory and converge in the in the meaning uh, in a common meaning not in the formal mathematical meaning means converge means come closer and closer converge to um, U intersected with X one that then the X H plus one coordinate decreases with a constant speed with a not constant with a speed bounded away from zero so it can't stay forever all right so this is like <clears throat> our statement that we have this change of vector fields and now we say that it's good so now we have to use this assertion that i proved at the beginning and let me just say now it's assume that the original function f has no critical point in F inverse of, sorry, if with critical values in F of P minus epsilon, F of P prime plus epsilon for some epsilon greater than zero, except for P and P prime. This is where we have to assume it 
if we don't assume it, uh, the statement is uh, slightly more complex, but you can still you can still prove it with this with this assumption. So how do you do? Well, we assume that there are no critical points between P and P prime, but this number of critical points is finite. So if there are only two critical points in the uh, in the region with epsilon equals zero, so if there are only P and P prime, then we increase and if we enlarge slightly the interval, then there will still be only two critical points. In particular, this means that this level set and that level set are non-singular level set. So let me call this level set A, and let me call this level set B. And then there is a theorem. Any trajectory psi of psi tilde of psi, of psi tilde flows from A to B. Any trajectory, any trajectory means any trajectory going through a point in F inverse of F of P minus epsilon, F of P plus epsilon. Okay, and now there is proof, which is like take Z in F inverse of F of P, F of P plus epsilon. Let gamma Z be the trajectory through Z. And does anybody have an idea how to give how to prove it from this at this moment using the preparatory lemmas that we that we used? So, is there any uh, any person in the audience that wants to tell what will be the next step? All right, there are no volunteers. So there are two options. There are two options. One, gamma Z does not enter U prime. I'm sorry, this was a trajectory of uh, trajectory of Psi tilde. So what happens if gamma Z, gamma Z doesn't enter your prime? Well, then gamma Z is actually a trajectory of Xi itself. All right? Because we would never change if it doesn't enter your prime we know that Xi is equal to Xi tilde away from U prime. Okay, and if a trajectory of Xi, so Xi is a gradient like vector field from F, okay? Xi is a gradient like vector field of F. So if you have a trajectory of Xi, that doesn't hit P or P prime, then it has to lead from A to B. Xi is a gradient like vector field for F. If a trajectory of Xi doesn't hit P or P prime, then it flows from A to B. Okay, because 
Well, that's what the trajectories do. The trajectory has to a traject a great a trajectory of a gradient like vector field hits uh, has the limit point is always a critical point of a uh, of a function. Okay, so it's a critical point of a function. So it's uh, mm, so it has to be a critical point. There are two critical points that are inside of in between a and b. These are p and p prime. If we don't hit p and p prime, then let me draw it on a picture. We have a b. This is the f inverse of f of p minus epsilon. This is f inverse f of p plus epsilon. We have here a this is you p p prime and there is u prime. Okay? So if we have a trajectory that is in here then it has to flow from A to B. Okay, so here is Z. All right, so if the trajectory doesn't enter, then gamma Z is a trajectory of Xi itself, and it flows from A to B, so this is, the case is the statement is proved. So there is a second possibility. So the statement is proved here. We prove the statement for if the trajectory gamma z doesn't enter u prime. So suppose it enters. Enters u prime. Then, by what I said, then It has to leave you prime. It has to leave you. Okay? It has to leave you because we proved that it has to leave you because we modify the vector field in such a way that no trajectory stays forever, in, no trajectory of gamma of psi tilde stays forever in u prime. Okay? So if, oh sorry, stays forever in u. So if we have a trajectory that hits u prime, then this trajectory has to leave you at finite time. If it leads, if it leaves you, it leaves it as a trajectory of psi. Because if we leave you, if the traje trajectory leaves you, it's uh, the same trajectory as, as u prime. So you can think of it as uh, like uh, taking a bus that one bus, uh, one line, one one line of bus of buses leaves you from A to B, and then you have another line of buses that is makes a slight detour in u prime, but then it is the same line as before. Okay, so this is like a, a real life uh, Morse theory. Uh, mm -hmm. If a trajectory here enters u prime, it has to leave u prime, and then it leaves it as a trajectory of psi. And then what, it, what can it do? If it has left u, it is a trajectory of psi tilde. It, it is a trajectory of psi until it hits u prime again. But we know that u prime was chosen in such a way that no trajectory that leaves u, that hits u prime, leaves u, never enters back again to u prime. So if it leaves u, it leaves it as a, as a trajectory of psi and it is a trajectory of psi forever, from this time on forever. Okay, and if it's a trajectory of psi till psi forever, then it will hit eventually hit B. Okay, because it 
that's what all trajectories of psi do. They that don't uh, uh, that uh, don't don't enter u prime. If a trajectory doesn't enter u prime of psi, then it hits it it eventually hits b in the future. All right, is that clear? This is an important step. I told you, modifying vector fields, working local coordinates is not that important. This is an important step. Uh, so if someone is in the audience, maybe uh, you can say or wave your hands if you understood the argument. I, I can't wait, wave hand, but I, I, I understood. OK, you can raise hands in the uh, in the chat, I think, or uh, in the participant list, if you want. But uh, okay, at least one person say it's understandable. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Sure. You can vote in the you can vote in the uh, on the participant list if you want. So oh, okay. But uh, as you said, it's uh, yes. it's okay. As you said, it's okay. But you can you are also allowed to vote, vote no if you want me to repeat the argument. All right, so this is like a, the part of the proof. Let me just say, well, so what happens in the with the past? We need to, we control the future, we need to control the past, but who controls the future controls the past. So, or this is the other way, as I said, okay. So, you no, know, the proverb is goes the other way around. Uh, suppose gamma prime enters u prime and it has to leave, but if it, enters u prime, so before it enters u prime, it has to be a trajectory of psi. Because if it enters u prime, it has, it cannot have left u prime before. Because if it, if it had left u prime before, it couldn't enter u prime again. So the trajectory that enters u prime, before it enters u prime, it's always, always in the past, uh, a trajectory of psi tilde, of psi. And the trajectory of psi that doesn't hit u prime, before it hits u prime, is all for all the time a trajectory of, of psi. And the trajectory of psi that doesn't enter u prime has to hit A in the past. So this is the same argument uh, said in the reverse. So this goes, uh, this goes precisely the same way so we, we have proved that a traje any trajectory of uh, any trajectory uh, of psi tilde flows from A to B. All right, so there is the final step in the proof. Final st stage of the proof. Use vector field integration lemma so we have a function this is our b this is our a we have a function f defined over here and we define f tilde to be equal to f over here we define f tilde to be equal to f over here and now we integrate we have a vector field psi tilde that flows from A to B. So we use the same argument as in the proof of vector field integration lemma to define the function F tilde in between A and B by interpolation. We in define mm. Mm by, uh, sorry, uh, we define F tilde 
by interpolation. So then f tilde is the same as is the same as f away from a and p, and it has two less critical points. Uh, two fewer critical points. Uh, all right, so let me come back to this picture. Or maybe this picture with interpolation. Uh, you see interpolation of between A and B by F tilde. That's uh, like a technical aspect, but it's uh, uh, it's somehow good to have it phrased clearly. Interpolation between A and B is a substantial change of the function F. So if you interpolate between F and between a and B, then essentially what you do is uh, mm, you um, essentially what you do is you change the function f on a big on the whole strip between A and B. Well, you would like to have control. So normally, if you make a change, you you want to see what what pre, what is precisely the change that you do. So the change is, uh, so you might want to see, well, where exactly, how much do I have to change my function f? Of course, I have to change it inside of you, but I actually, I need to change it in the neighborhood of the set of trajectories that hit, of xi that hit you prime, okay? So if I have a trajectory that hits, that goes like this. Well, the function f will be changed on the whole trajectory. So f tilde will differ from f on the whole trajectory or nearby, or maybe just on the whole trajectory starting from some, some moment, okay? So what is exactly the set of trajectories that hit this u prime? Well, this is a neighborhood of, this is not just a neighborhood of the, of the curve gamma. This is, you need to take care of all these trajectories that start somewhere and enter u prime and this you can maybe redraw we have uh, the trajectory gamma we have the set u prime and now we have two extra objects that i didn't, didn't mention we have the stable manifold of u and uh, they they are not supposed to intersect too much so okay so but this is like a this is the picture that have to convey some uh, some of the ideas but it not uh, it's not uh, the most precise picture ever you have stable manifolds and you have unstable manifolds. And if you are in a neighborhood, if you start in a neighborhood of a small of a stable manifold to your uh, uh, to one of the critical points, actually the stable manifolds intersect. So it's not the picture is really not the most precise picture ever. But if you start in the neighborhood of a uh, of a manifold of, of the stable manifold so if you are in here then you will eventually reach the neighborhood u prime conversely you can always choose a neighborhood of the stable set and the unstable set of the two critical points such that if you are away from this neighborhood then you will never reach u prime so actually the change of the function and I'm not giving you like the super precise, the super precise proof of that because uh, it's uh, uh, it's not the most uh, important thing. The change of the function is conducted in in a neighborhood of the stable and unstable manifolds of the critical points P and P prime. It's big, so if you look at the picture, at the real life picture, uh, the real life picture should be drawn in black. Uh, so if you look at this picture, then, and you cancel these two, this pair of critical points, then the change is 
performed in this in the hall in this region the function is changed in in the in this region so it's a big region but it's like a big region that you control because it's uh, controlled by the stable and the unstable manifold and you know that you can make sure that you don't change the function for example in this point all right so this is like a final final remark mm. and another final another remark is that when we if we manage to develop some rudiments of surf theory then like death or cancellations will be like will play an important role in surfs uh, in surf theory okay <clears throat> so let me just let me now pass to the main applications of uh, our main discussion or main assumption of the uh, of the statement of the cancellation theorem maybe let me just come back to it and um, so this is our assumption let me just copy it so that's our main assumption assume there is a single trajectory from p to p prime the single trajectory of psi all right so what how can we deal with this assumption what can we say about this assumption? So this assumption is uh, more uh, has some homological meaning. And now the part of this lecture is about the homological meaning of this assumption and uh, explaining this assumption to um, explaining this assumption to uh, to you. So, how many of you, like, let me start another vote, because that's an important, uh, an important thing. How many of you know what is uh, an intersection index of two manifolds? All right. One for one against two for right. Nobody else uh, can. Okay. So that's an important operation. So a uh, small digression. Suppose M is an oriented manifold and AB uh, closed are closed oriented submanifolds. Intersecting at the uh, intersecting transversely, and this is uh, the assumption of transversal intersection is important here. So this is like uh, 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 this is like an important assumption. So. And the, uh, the important fact pink is about orientation. So everything is oriented and we can relax this, uh, uh, relax this assumption in a moment, but let's uh, assume that it's the case because we choose A inside of uh, or maybe c a intersected with b and assume oh there's one more assumption the, the dimension of a plus dimension of b is equal to dimension of m 
All right, so this is like, an important assumption. So now we have, what is transversal intersection? Transverse intersection is that the T C M, okay? So this is a transverse intersection. Now the discussion that we had, whether this is a direct sum, okay? That was a discussion like two weeks ago, whether this is a direct sum or just a sum, if this Holes. So if the dimension of A plus dimension of B is equal to the dimension of M, well, then this is the dimension of this vector space plus dimension of this vector space is equal to the dimension of this vector space. So this is actually, this is actually a direct sum. So if it's a direct sum, well, now this is oriented. This is oriented. So we can say, well, and this is oriented. So there are like two options. Either the orientation of this sum is, consi is consistent with the orientation of the total space, or it's not. We assign epsilon to C, and this is epsilon, this is epsilon, not the var epsilon in LaTeX, but epsilon because it takes, it is a sign. Minus one, depending on whether the orientations match. So if you don't remember what does it mean that the orientations match, well, the orientations match where you have oriented basis of this guy, oriented basis of this guy, you stay with this, this basis first, the other basis there, there and then the, uh, uh, you have the basis for this and plus the basis of this gives you the basis of this, whether this is, if this is oriented basis, this oriented basis, where this is the orient, whether this is oriented basis or it's uh, doesn't, or it's a basis that you have to switch some, uh, in, some vectors base vectors to get an oriented basis. That's the, the most basic way you can think about it. So you assign this, this sign, so definition A B epsilon of C. All right, so this is the intersection index. Well, remark for this to be defined it is enough that a be oriented and be co-oriented which then co-oriented means uh, the choice of orientation of the normal bundle. Okay, so you don't need to get a definition of the intersection index. You don't need the orient to have a, a orientation of the um, um, to have the orientation of the manifold. You just need the orientation of the submanifolds A and co-orientation of the sub of the manifold B. So co-oriented means the the normal bundle is oriented. And this is like a, mm, uh, an approach uh, taken in, for example, the book of Kronheimer and Mrówka on monopoles. So uh, Peter and Tom wrote a book about monopoles, but they, that is the intersection introduction via Morse theory is really excellent. And if you want to have a, have a good source to read about uh, Morse theory, maybe without uh, too many proofs, then this is one of the then sections or chapter two, or maybe chapter 2.4. 2.4 is, uh, is a, good, a good place to read. But then they, they, they use this uh, stronger assumption that this is co-oriented. 
So how can we, so what we can do this? So well, and of course there's a remark. If HT is a family of, well, it's even a family of immersions, but it's smooth. So it's like a homotopy of A and H0 of A is transverse to B, H1 of A is transverse to B, then H0 of A in is equal to H1. So the intersection index is uh, not, so the intersection index is uh, defined, uh, um, uh, is homotopy invariant. And actually this definition is like a basic, is like a geometric definition and uh, you can have a more algebraic definition, which is H K of M Z cross H N minus K of M Z is Z. So this is like a, in this case, you can sometimes refer to it as Poincare duality. And if you prefer maybe for younger audience uh, with a lot of uh, analytic background, if you have an K form omega and eta and N minus K form, then you can say what is integral and this gives you the map from K the RAM homologies of M cross the RAM homologies of, of N minus K of M going to the real numbers. And actually all these three approaches are like the manifestations of the same, the same algebraic object. All right, so this is like this is not exactly the Poincaré duality because the Poincaré duality is, uh, mm, well, it's slightly different than, than that. Okay, so you, mm, but the Poincaré duality is used in the construction of this map. Uh, all right, so how can we use it in the, uh, in the Morse theory, in Morse theory? Well, Suppose we have like two critical points, P and Q. And we have a non-critical level set F inverse of C. All right, so we have, here we start, we have a stable manifold, sorry, unstable. So it is W of P. We have a stable manifold and we define m of x, y to be, uh, sorry, m of p, q, the unstable of p intersected with the stable of q, intersected with f inverse of c. This is like the space of trajectories. We will study this space later on. So this is like an important object. And if you're, for example, interested in uh, like gauge theory or Havanov theory or whatever, then understanding the space, then this is like the basic example and like the most simple example of something that is called the moduli space. And uh, the, this concept is uh, like one of the most important in modern like low dimensional topology, one of the most important concepts is the moduli space. Uh, and uh, studying this object is like one of the most uh, 
like a baby baby model for more for more complex uh, more complex approaches. And for example, this is like an approach that is uh, you can read it in Kronheimer Mrówka book, but also in Nicolescu's uh, invitation of uh, to uh, more theory book. So this is a space of trajectories. So we we argue that is the that if the flow is more smooth then it's a smooth manifold of dimension is equal to index of q minus index of p minus one. All right. So this is like the uh, like the dimension. And the dimension is uh, this is like the difference of the dimensions. So how can we use the intersection index? Well, suppose index of Q is equal to index P plus one. Then MPQ is zero dimensional. And now there is a one like one of the most important concept of the uh, of the moduli space question. So now question MPQ is zero dimensional. We want to argue that MPQ is compact. Okay. If so, this uh, this deserves to be a lemma. If the dimension of MPQ is zero, then MPQ is compact. All right, so the proof. Well, suppose contrary. Suppose contrary. Choose the n a sequence of points in MPQ. Or, or no, if we don't need it. So actually, we just choose the point. We will prove that it's a sequentially compact, but for manifolds, it's the same as being compact for sub, especially for sub manifolds of. Choose the n sequence of z. Let z be the limit in f inverse of c. Okay, f inverse of c is the level set, and the level set is compact, so we can pass to a limit of a subsequence. Let gamma n be a trajectory of Xi from P to Q. Let gamma be a trajectory of Xi. Uh, this is through Zn through Z. So we know that if, a, if, Z, if the trajectory to Zn by the definition, the trajectory to the n is the uh, is a trajectory between p and q. Okay, that's the definition of the trajectory. So we have a trajectory from p to q through the n, and this is the gamma n. All right. So we look at the limit trajectory. So we said a trajectory, a limit of trajectories from p to q is a broken trajectory. Then gamma is a broken trajectory. But we already saw that if index of Q is equal index P plus one, that was Martin's questions and we answered it directly, then there are no broken broken trajectory or a regular uh, honest trajectory f 
from P to Q. There are no broken trajectories from P to Q. So the only trajectories from P to Q are unbroken. So this was discussed today. So I, I hope you remember the argument. If this is a broken trajectory, then the index has to be greater than the index of P and smaller than the index of Q, but there is no room for it. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, so then this is, so this is a honest trajectory. Then Z belongs to MPQ because the trajectory from of Z is a honest trajectory from P to Q. So this is a proof. But this is a proof that tells you several things. It tells you much more. First of all, we prove compactness and like in the gauge theory, in such like different statements, the compactness of the moduli space is like a key, key property. So this is like an introduction to gauge theory in a sense. That's one thing. The other thing is that this holds only we use we heavily use this assumption that the indices are different so if the expected dimension or the dimension of the manifold is zero then we have compactness if the dimension is one then we don't need to have a compactness because we can have broken trajectories which are limits we will study these limits uh, and this closure of these trajectories later on so we will have this uh, a more detailed study of the moduli space of trajectories for higher dimensional objects, but uh, this is not, uh, uh, but not today. So Z belongs to PQ, so this proves compactness. All right, so if MPQ is compact and zero dimensional, then MPQ is finite number of points. And we will we, we like to say, well, okay, we assign a number to this, uh, to these points. Well, we can assign a number of, uh, we can assign a, like, a, mm -hmm. we would like to count these points. So have the number of points uh, that uh, are, mm, mm, uh, how many points are there? So for example, uh, ideally we have like one critical point and then we can cancel and we can simplify, okay? But let's say we have many critical points, we want to count them. But the count is not the good, like a naive count, like take the number of points is not a good idea. So what? why it's not a good idea, let me draw you a very naive picture. We have this level set. We have one intersection, this is A. Another intersection is B. So this is like, but now I can modify my vector field Xi by an isotopy. And I can do that by the isotopy intersection lemma that I proved already to shift A slightly. I can make an isotopy of A to move A away from B if they intersect like, the, like on the picture like, if they intersect literally like in the picture like this, they intersect in the pair of points. I can shift this A and they are disjoint. So the naive count of NPQ is, uh, uh, naive count is not a good idea. So set A to be equal to WU of P intersected with F inverse of C. P is WS of Q intersected with F inverse of C. And we would like to define A cross B and say it like N of PQ. All right, so what is the problem now with this definition? If you want to define it like this, what is the problem? Oh, I guess we don't have the orientation. There's no orientation. And this is a problem that we can't just uh, solve in a natural way. So the stable and unstable manifold of critical points are not canonically oriented. So what do we do? Well, I, and for simplicity, like this is the first time you meet this construction probably. So I will do it in the oriented case, referring you to the book of Kondheimer and Brufka for the 
discussion of the non-oriented case, okay? Let F be a Morse function on an oriented manifold M, and of course it's closed for any Q for any critical point Q we artificially choose an orientation of a, I think the convention is that we choose the orientation of the unstable manifold for Q. So we have like, oh sorry, this is this table. I have started drawing this table. Actually, it's we have the we have Q, we have the un, sorry, we have Q, we have the unstable manifold of Q. So it's enough to choose the orientation of the space TQ W of Q. Okay, this is like this is enough to, to define enough but this induces the orientation of the unstable manifold oriented so a and b which were defined before so a and b was were like this okay are oriented So N of PQ is well defined. All right, so now there's a main result for, for December, our plan for December. So let me just finish with this uh, like for this function F and the choice of orientations define C K to be the how do you say it's a group, a Z module, the I would say vector space over Z, okay? This is this is the most, the, the worst way of phrasing it, but it is, uh, I know that people are scared from Z modules and the vector space over Z means you have a free Z module, okay? Generated by classes of critical points of index K. So, so an element A in CK is just, is a sum of AI and then there is a class of QI where QI is a critical point of uh, formally generated. So we, I just have the, if you don't like this formality, you can say, let me, uh, sorry for uh, pro, uh, for extending the, the, the lecture, but this is like a good, I, I need to have a good moment to stop and this, it will be in like uh, three or four minutes. We will resume the classes uh, three or four minutes for, or, or five minutes later. So this is like a formal definition. So it's like take the vector space whose uh, name is, uh, whose dimension is the same as the number of the critical points of the given index and 
Mm. And uh, uh, and uh, well, we think of generators of this space as corresponding as bijectively corresponding to the critical points of the of the Morse function f. Okay, so this is like the and then we have a map dk coming from k to ck minus one, and well, it's it's enough to be defined on the generator. So these are like this belongs to z. These are coefficients. These are like basis. So dk of a class Q is equal to sum over P being critical points of P and index P is K minus one. And PQ times the class of P. All right, where NPQ is the intersection index as above. All right, so this is like a definition. It's a very artificial definition. You will see that it's correct, that it's uh, it makes sense. And now there's a theorem. I will put it here and then I will upload the uh, upload the, uh, the lecture, uh, so theorem on Morse with an chain complex one v j d j minus one is zero or you can say like d square equals zero this is a chain complex second the h j of c star which is defined as kernel of dj divided by the image of dj plus one is isomorphic to the jth homology group of m with z coefficients. This is a big theorem. Like that the topology, this gives you a topology, like the Morse function detects the topology of the space. All right? So the topology of the space by homology groups. Okay, I will discuss it later. I will discuss it next uh, 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 during next uh, lect during next lecture in a week, and then we and we will prove it, prove this theorem, or at least uh, most of this theorem will be proved. Okay, thank you very much. I stop recording, and you can ask.